So we know that our aggregate demand is downward slope. So why aggregate demand is downward slope? We know that our aggregate demand formula, which is our GDP formula based on expenditure approach is consumption plus investment plus government spending plus exports minus imports, which we call it net exports. So we have three series that explain or three effects that explain why aggregate demand is downward slope. The first one is the wealth effect. And here we refer to the purchasing power parity of your money. So let's assume that we have a higher price. So if prices increase, this means that your consumption will decrease, which means your purchasing power priority will be lower. Therefore, given the same amount of money, you're going to buy less goods and services. Therefore, if C will go down, I know that based on this formula, aggregate demand will go down. Therefore, here we have a negative relationship between inflation and aggregate demand, between price and aggregate demand. And that's why, because of this negative relationship, our aggregate demand is downward slope. The second effect is called interest rate effect. And if prices will increase, this means that our interest rate will be higher. Our nominal interest rate will be higher. Our real interest rate will be higher. And if interest rate increases, this means that investment will decrease because we have a negative relationship between investment and interest, which we call it crowding out effect. Because if interest rate increases for businesses, it will be very hard for them to repay the debt service, to repay the interest on this capital. And that's why they wouldn't have a motive to invest. If investment go down, we know that aggregate demand will go down. Therefore, we have an active relationship between price and aggregate demand. That's why aggregate demand is downward slope. The third effect is called the exchange rate effect. Higher prices, it means that higher interest rate. If we have a relatively higher interest rate, it means that we will have capital inflow, we will have cash inflow, foreigners would prefer to deposit their money here in Australia, therefore our currency will appreciate. If our currency will appreciate, it means that our goods will be relatively expensive, therefore our exports will decrease and foreign goods will be relatively cheaper, therefore our imports will increase, consequently net export will be lower. If net export will be lower, so lower exports and higher imports, which means net exports will be lower, I know that aggregate demand will be lower. Therefore, we have a negative relationship between inflation and aggregate demand. That's why the aggregate demand curve is downward slope. So the next part is, this is our downward aggregate demand curve. Which factors will shift our aggregate demand curve, either to the right or to the left? So based on this formula, I know that our aggregate demand is consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net export. So if any of these four variables will increase, it would result in higher aggregate demand, therefore it will shift to the right. If any of these variables decrease, it means that lower aggregate demand, it will mean it means shift to the left. Therefore, the first variable will be consumption. Which factors will affect consumption? A stock market boom or crash. If stock market has a boom, it means that you become wealthier, therefore you will consume more, therefore aggregate demand will shift to the right or invest more. A stock market crash, it means that your wealth will be lower, lower, therefore it will shift to the left. Second one is preferences, consumption over saving. If people has more preference towards consumption over saving, therefore consumption will be higher, aggregate demand will shift to the right. If they prefer to save more, consumption will be lower, therefore aggregate demand will decrease, it will shift to the left. Tax hikes or cuts. If the personal tax rate or income tax rate is lower, therefore disposal income will be higher, consumption will be higher, therefore aggregate demand will shift to the right and vice versa. Second factor is related to investment. So productivity. If companies became more productive, they start to produce a lot, therefore aggregate demand will shift to the right. In straight, we have a negative relationship between in straight and investment. If in straight go down, investment will increase, therefore aggregate demand will shift to the right. If there is any new business opportunity, therefore in investment will increase, consequently aggregate demand will shift to the right. Investment incentive, if a government will give investment incentive such as give them land for free or help them with grants, subsidy or lower taxes, this will increase investment, therefore aggregate demand will shift to the right and vice versa. The third and expectations, if investors expect that in the future they will make higher profit, therefore investment will increase, aggregate demand will shift to the right. Our third category is government expenditure and here we refer to the fiscal policy either expansionary fiscal policy or contractionary fiscal policy. Expansionary fiscal policy by increasing government spending and decreasing tax, therefore aggregate demand will shift to the right, 
or contractionary fiscal policy by increasing taxes, decreasing government spending, therefore aggregate demand will shift to the left. Our last one is net export. And when we talk about net export, we talk about the exchange rate. Exchange rate has an effect on net export. If a currency appreciates, net export will decrease because our goods becomes relatively more expensive, while the foreign goods becomes relatively cheaper. Therefore, aggregate demand will shift to the left. If our currency depreciates, our goods will be relatively cheaper and foreign goods will be more expensive. Therefore, aggregate demand will shift to the right because net export will be higher. Then the world economy or the economy of neighboring countries. If, for example, China is our neighboring country here in Australia. So if China economy started to flourish, it means that they need to consume more. It means that they need to import a lot. So they will import from us. Therefore, the exports of Australia will increase. Therefore, aggregate demand will shift to the right.